Hello, everyone. This is Kay Bashar, and we are now in module two, part one. In this module, we will be completing templates that are um, that are set up for you to take over your estate, to do your estate claim. The first document that we will be working on is the power of attorney limited, okay? The purpose of us taking over our, our estate or claiming our estate is so that we can put on notice certain departments and divisions and entities that the living soul is here and you are now able to claim the estate. As uh, as told you, as I told you before, um, the prosecutor and the judge and the GOV, apostrophe T, has claim to your estate and all of the benefits that go with it. Because you are the beneficiary of your estate, it is important to put everyone on notice that the living soul has arrived and is here to take claim of everything that belongs to the estate and so on and so forth, okay? So if you read here um, throughout the document, you'll see at first, when you first enter into the document, um, it gives you the complete instructions. However, I am going to walk you through the, uh, through the instructions, all right? Moving on along, if you notice here, there is a header, I mean, there is a footer located on this document, okay? Um, the power of attorney to, this would be your all caps name, all right, first, last, and middle. Power of attorney two. The item number is going to be your date of birth with no slashes, and we are going to keep POA, just the same as we did on the copyright notice, okay? Kind of the same concept, but you still want to make sure that you change that footer on the document, okay? Um, and it reads, the power of attorney limited. No, all men by these presents that your all caps, straw man name, the debt door, enterprise entity in Eans Legis, the undersigned hereby make constitute and living soul name, herein the flesh and blood men, living soul, the living soul name, as the true and lawful attorney in fact for straw man name. And in the corporate capacity, LLC, place and steed, and for my personal and commercial use of the benefit, all right? This is you basically stating that you have the power of attorney over your straw man. As I mentioned before, when you enter into the courtroom, unless you make the judge announce their, oath, their public oath, then they are in control of your estate. They consider you minors. They consider you uh, incapable of taking over your uh, estate or handling your own affairs. And they also consider you to be there. To they also consider themselves to be your custodian, as your straw man is seen as a thing. That is your straw man name on the docket. When you enter into the courtroom, they consider you dead. Okay. Now, moving on, number one, to ask, demand, request, file, sue, recover, register, collect, and receive each and every sum of money, credit, account, legacy, bequest, interest, dividend, annuity, and demand, which now is or here and after, hereafter shall become due, owing or payable or dischargeable, belonging to or accepted or claimed or presented to the debt door straw man name a corporate entity and to use and take any lawful and or commercial means necessary for the recovery thereof by legal or commercial processes of otherwise and to execute and deliver or receive a satisfaction or release thereof together with the right of power to settle compromise compound and or discharge any claim or initiative initiate an administrative claim for damages or make any necessary demands. Power of attorney means that you have the power to do whatever you have to do that uh, any kind of any kind of violations or anything that is coming against your straw man, you have the right to represent that straw man in any way that is deemed necessary. Number two, to exercise 
any or all of the following powers as to all kinds of personal property, private property, and any property goods, wares, and merchandise chooses in action and other property in possession in where a security interest is established and to or in other actions. To secure by private registration the interest or security interest in any or all property where necessary, to accept for value, and to discharge any and all debts for fine, fee, or tax where necessary, to cause the commercial adjustment of any such account held open against the debt or this is the straw man name, to use where necessary any site, drafts, money orders, bills of exchange, to finalize any of the above on in, in my behalf, all right? Number four, to open check accounts whereupon being closed to discharge any fines, fees, taxes, and debts via adjustment, oh, excuse me, I apologize, via adjustment, where am I at, you guys? Just a second. Okay, here we are. Via adjustment and set off. Number five, to create, amend, supplement, or terminate any trust or the res created by the government, District of Columbia, and ratified or exercised in any manner by any other state. Number six, to request, retrieve, file, submit, or otherwise any papers in my behalf of in on my behalf for any matter, whether commercial, quasi-judicial, administrative, or other, and to sign my legal corporate corporate name as my act and deed to execute and deliver same for any redress and remedy claim, suits, or otherwise. Okay. Giving and granting unto my said attorney, in fact, full power and authority to do and perform all and every act and thing whatsoever resequent, necessary or appropriate to be done in and about all matters as fully to all intents and purposes as I might and could do if I was personally present and hereby ratifying all that my attorney in fact shall lawfully do or cause to be done by the virtue of this presence of these presents. The powers and authority hereby conferred upon my said attorney, in fact, shall be applicable to all real and private property, personal property, interest therein now owned or hereinafter acquired by me as the Eens Legis LLC in wherever situation and as evidenced by a filed security interest. My said attorney, in fact, which would be your straw, I mean, your living soul name, is empowered by, is empowered hereby to determine in his role, in his sole discretion, the time, purpose, for the manner in which any power herein conferred upon him shall be exercised and the condition, provisions, and con covenants of any instruments or documents which may be executed by him pursuing hereto and in the acquisition or distribution of real personal and private property my said attorney in fact shall have exclusive power to fix the terms or amounts thereof for cash funds credit and or affecting all property including rights, titles, interests to same and if on for credit with or without security. When the context so requires the masculine gender includes a feminine and or neuter and the singular numbers include the plural, all right? You wanna make sure that you get this document notarized once you have notarized this document in its entirety, 
make sure that you also uh, fix the date on here to the year 2022. Read this document again if you need to. Uh, but once you, this document will be filed in your UCC1 financial statement. And if you have any court cases coming up, you will want to submit this document uh, to the courts before your court date, along with a special appearance notice, which can be obtained on the website. Okay. Um, that's pretty much the case of this document here. Uh, we'll be moving on to the next document, which will be um, which will be the trademark affidavit. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next affidavit. Hello, everyone. Kay Bashar here, and we are moving along with module two, part one, which is claiming your estate. Um, throughout this uh, module, we will be completing uh, vital templates that allow you to take over your estate, put claim on your estate, put in different departments on notice, as well as file these documents within your UCC1 financial statement. Um, I did say on the last document that we'll be moving to the trademark. However, we are moving on to actually actually the affidavit of title, all right, which is a statement of beneficial ownership. So I'm just going to read through this document, tell you how to complete these documents. Um, these documents would also be, um, would, can be submitted to your county clerk, registered uh, with your county clerk, and they will also be registered in your UCC1 financial statement. And like I say before, that you complete the template as it is shown, if the name is shown in all caps, if the name is shown in um, uppercase, lowercase, with a slash, a hyphen, you complete the way that it is shown, all right? Um, the last name, first name, middle name, here in the affiant, whose domicile is enter full mailing address. You're going to use whatever mailing address it is that you have registered uh, with your UPS box or with your whatever kind of system you're using for your mail. That's what you would put there. Being duly sworn states that I am familiar with the facts recited, whereas the affiant obtained the age of majority on. Um, now, the age of majority will be the age that you turned 18. OK, or your children, the age that you or your children, the, the year or the, the month and the year and the uh, date that you turned 18. If you if you're completing this document for a, for a, one of your children who have not yet turned 18, you are going to put the age, the year and time that they do turn 18. The age of majority is when with whoever turned 18 or is turning 18. OK. And a client is owner of the legal and equitable estate, which includes the herein described lands situated. And then you're going to put here your address or you're going to put not the address, but your city and your state evidenced by the statements and the certificate of live birth records attached to this claim as exhibit A, including but not limited to. So as you did with your birth certificate recension, you're going to have a copy of your birth certificate or your certificate of live birth attached to this. However, uh, if that's if you are filing it with the county clerk. Now, now, if you are filing this document in your UCC, there will already be a copy of your uh, authenticated birth certificate within that file. So you really won't have to go as, as, as extreme as a, a, a attaching another, another birth certificate to this, so on and so forth, if that makes sense, okay? One, the affiance principle ish, the affiance principle original issue and revisionary interest in financial instruments and transactions secured by or loaned from the estate, the human body of clay and earth, lands including the mineral rights, silicate, sodium, potassium, magnesium, calcium, iron, forest, sulfur, chlorine, iodine, oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and New nitrogen, all leaseholds and royalties regarding the land, including the affiant child and the adult of the estate. Okay. Number three, the entitlement of the labor leased, sold, taken, or otherwise used to secure capital arising out of the estate at any time for every undertaking or agreement by which the estate became a party. 
Whereas the affiance title to the encumbrances, liens, and interests noted by the memorial underwritten or endorsed hereon and subject to the rights or encumbrances subsisting as provided in the laws of the United States of America and the treaties. Whereas this is an affidavit of an affiant who states that he or she, enter your name here, is familiar with the facts recited. The party named in said birth certificate is the same party as one of the owners named in said certificate of title and that thereafter the registrar of title shall treat said registered owner as having attained the age of majority at the age of 18 after the date of birth shown by said certificate. Witnessed by virtue uh, witnesseth by virtue of the power vested in me through this deed, I transfer and assign all right title and interest to lands, tentiments, and herd, 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 herd of tentiments in enter the county name here or whatsoever or wheresoever situated to vest in. You're going to put your last name, first name, middle name trustee under enter the last name declaration of trust dated and you're going to put you're going to insert the date okay i declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the united states of america that the foregoing is true and correct so on and so forth once this document is complete you will uh once again get it notarized as usual that's the name of the game um you're going to get it notarized and be sure that you are not signing your documents until you have until you get in front of the notary. Um, you can have two witnesses here, which is what makes it legitimate, where two or three are gathered. Um, there, uh, I am in the midst. So basically, this is your witness here. So you would have two witnesses. It can be a sister, a brother, a cousin, somebody out the street, whoever, some kind of witness there. Um, to sign these documents for you, okay? And that will conclude the process, that will conclude the uh, affidavit of title or statement of beneficial ownership uh, for module one, I mean, for module two, part one, and we will be moving on to our next document. I'll catch you there. Hey, everybody, and we're back again. Uh, with another template that is used for your claiming of your estate, okay? So we're just going to move right along. Um, if you look here, this is the notice of existence of a trust, okay? Um, this document will once again be recorded within your UCC1 financial statement, as well as this document can be uh, recorded in any personal documentation pertaining to the trust that you have or any of the trusts that you have established, okay? And this is known as a living God trust, okay? Um, basically, you can see here, the commentary gives you full information on how to complete the document. Be sure that before you print off or get this document notarized that you do remove the commentary of this document along the sides along the lines here, um, which can be done with the review. You click the review button, it's gonna ask you if you wanna remove the commentary and that's how you would do so, all right? But be sure to make sure that you remove any of the information on the sides, all right? Any of the commentary that gives you info on how to complete this document. Um, you're going to uh, basically fill it out accordingly. As you can see the date, I full name, make it known that there is a God trust for, you're going to put the name here, which would be, this could be, uh, this will be your name and your heirs or whoever you're, if you're not doing it for yourself, if you're doing it for somebody else, whatever the case may be, it's going to be their name and their heirs. Okay. I witness whereof, um, your name here, write out your full name in ink as a woman and if and if you're married as, as you can see here when you put the box when you put the box here when you touch the box it's going to give you the full instructions okay um hyphenate your name and it would be uh you're going to put a dash in between the first last between the first last and middle name okay between the the last and the middle name 
all right? If you're married um, and you're writing this part in, you're not going to type that. You're going to write it, all right? As trustee has caused its autograph below. You're going to put the date in the year of our Lord. You're going to spell it out the same way that you do on your declaration of sovereignty and your common law copyright. You're going to spell out the month, the day, the year. Um, house of, you're putting your um, last name, which is your original, your original last name, ancient, and then you're putting your last name again. And it gives you the instructions, you guys. When you touch it, you can read exactly when it, if your last name or maiden name woman has been changed by your ancestors, enter that name here. Otherwise, just enter the same value as the house of the name. So if you have a different name because you're married, then you want to put that here. And then your, your ancient name will be your original name. As trustee, surgeress, just soleil by this is going to be your signature your ucc you can put the without prejudice um you know put your without prejudice ucc so on and so forth you're going to get this notarized with the county you can write the county name in or you can type it over the line you can type it in get this notarized on blank date before me a notary republic personally appeared in proved to me on this basis of satisfactory evidence to be the man or woman whose name is subscribed of the within attached instrument and acknowledged to me that he or she executed the same in his authorized capacity and that by his or her autograph on the instrument the man or woman executed the instrument i certify under penalty of perjury under the law full laws of whatever state you're in and the state of you're going to put the all caps that the foregoing paragraph is correct and true. Witness of my hand and seal, um, capacity claimed by autograph as living soul, so sujuris, just soleil. Notice to agent is notice to principal. Notice to principal is notice to agent. That will complete the that will complete this document. And this is the beginning record of you having a God trust or having ownership of any trust of any sort. When we move on to module three, you'll see how we set up our foreign estates, how we set up our foreign trust, et cetera, et cetera. However, this is a good document to have for you to submit with your UCC1 financial statement because it makes it a, it makes it a public record as well as an official document of the state. I'll catch you over on, this will conclude the, um, the explanation of the notice of existence of a trust and um, I'll catch you on the next template. Hello everyone. We have now moved on to the next document that is included in module two, part one, which is establishing your estate or claiming your estate, okay? Um, here, prior to this, we just did the existence of a God trust document. Here is the declaration of trust of whatever your family's last name is, the Familia God trust. I want you guys to know that you can create this document according to to how it works for you. If you don't subscribe to being a Christian or if you don't subscribe to any religious dominion or domination, you do not have to, you can format this God trust according to your liking, okay? This here is simply a format, a blueprint of some things that, sh that your trust document should contain, all right? Um, and it reads, this declaration of trust is made on whatever date that you created it by the by and between the Trinity of the Almighty God. Now, in my trust document, I don't have his beloved son, the Holy Ghost or the host of heavens. I don't have of that. So you can have this declaration of trust is made on the date between the Almighty God and the family of you know, or the heirs of, um, I don't have anything as far as, uh, I removed a descendant of Abraham, 
um, having have been granted dominion as managing trustee currently living on, but not ever limited to the land known as whatever state you hereby declare and agrees that they have received from a trust donor the sum of $100 silver, $100 in silver and other properties described therein attached, they will hold and manage the same as steward and trustee and any additions to it in the trust as it follows and affirms. So it goes on. This is a very lengthy document, you guys. Um, it's very broad. Um, it gives a a wide range of things that you can have into your trust and you can uh, you can set this up according to whatever makes it out, whatever works for you, okay? Um, if you can see here, there are commentaries on each side of the document. You would need to go to the uh, review or the layout to remove the commentary from the side. However, you can use those instructions accordingly. Be sure to change the dates uh, and the year at the bottom the, of your footer, make sure that you get those document, get those uh, those areas updated, as well as your header, which will be the last name and the familia God trust. Okay, um, if you go on to see, it goes deep into. Um, you know, the principal and income of all properties accepted by the trustee and to be administered under the declaration of trust shall be held in the trust by trustees on behalf of the God trust. So those are speaking of whoever you end up leaving this to, whoever you end up, your legacy that goes on, so on and so forth. Um, in this declaration of trust and in amendments to the term charitable purposes shall includes God's plans and not limited to any church, spiritual, religious, or charitable purposes. Now, I don't subscribe to any religion, um, but what, you, what, what creates a nation is having a, a church. Um, that is what creates a nation is having, um, is having a church, uh, a military uh, as well as a form of government, okay? Those are what, that is what creates a nation. So it is not um, an opposing thing to mention uh, a spiritual religion because being spiritually inclined with the divine source is a form of spirituality. Um, you don't have to have religion in there. Like I said, you wanna format this document according to what works best for you. This document is to be kept with your family documents, okay? Um, this document is to be kept in a private exclusive area that is not out in the open where those who you trust or those who you have considered to be the trustee or the next heir should know about this document, should be well-versed with this document. And this document should be put to the side and it does not have to be listed in your UCC, okay? The only thing that you need to put in the UCC is the existence of a God trust. You do not need to put any of your private information. And in fact, when you file your UCC, you redact all private numbers, EINs, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this document goes on and on with certain Bible verses in which um, if you look here on the 10th, it reads, 10th, the trust shall be governed solely by righteousness for God. The dominion and rights given by him and by the following truths in the scriptures as partially stated below and in the 1611 King James Version or the Geneva Bible as publicly published. Also in the law of nations, declarations, international treaties, all rights of mankind shall be upheld and recognized above all else. Anything in contrary to God's law shall be null and void for any effect of act or action. And it has these Bible verses here. Remember, common law is the Bible. It is not up, it is not opposing for you to have Bible verses within your trust or within any of your documents. It does not subscribe you to Christianity or any other religion, okay? So read this document in its entirety as it is full of information. Take your time, discuss this with your family, discuss this with those who you would be passing down your legacy and your or your lineage to. As I said, you can format this according to what works for you. And um that will be pretty much that will conclude the the presentation for the God Trust for, for the document of the God Trust, and we'll be moving on next to the trademark.
Hey everyone, we are moving along. We are now reviewing um, the trademark Alpha David as it pertains to module two, part one of claiming your estate. Okay. Now, previously we do use a cop a common law copyright uh, with your declaration of sovereignty that is used in module one, which is sent to the U.S. Secretary of State as well as the Secretary of State that you were born in. However, this document goes more into depth. It goes more in depth specifically on your penalties and specifically on um, what will take place as far as your self-governing goes. If your trademark or copyright laws are infringed upon, okay? And um, you will want to make sure that your common law copyright, um, it kind of matches up with this trademark here. You want to make them to be, in a sense, identical. You want to have the numbers the same as far as the, uh, the cost per violation, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Um, there are a list of instructions that are listed here. Um, within the instructions, I do have $1,000, but if you are if you are aligning your declaration of sovereignty with this document, you will put 50,000 or 500,000 as it pertains to that document, okay? Um, let's read this document. I'm not gonna read it in its entirety uh, as I would like for you to go through and do that yourself, but I am gonna to touch on some core, basis, uh, some core basis of the document and uh, allow you to go back and look at it for yourself. And it reads, truth affidavit in the nature of supplemental rules for administrative and maritime claims, rule C6, trademark and copyright. Verified declaration in the nature by an affidavit for truth in commerce in contract by waiver for tort presented by me, addressee, living soul name. Agent in living soul, one for we the people under the original common law jurisdiction by the Whatever state it is that you live in, you want to make sure that you update that information accordingly, okay? And United States of America contracts, the Constitution. You're going to leave this over here on this side, the Republic of One, the Republic in One by the several United States, whatever state you're in, in America, okay? Now, as moving along, we know that in the beginning, Everything as far as authenticating your birth certificate has to be done within the state that you were born in. But as we go throughout the process, this will be, these documents will be pertaining to the state that you now live in or reside in, okay? So this wouldn't be for where you were born. It would be specifically where you reside. Your injunction would be for where you reside. Every other document would be where you reside, okay? The only thing that is for where you were born is the process for the, the documents that pertain to the authentication, okay? Your birth certificate authentication. So don't get that confused. For whom it may concern in the matter for the fiction secure party known as straw man name, different variations, as you see here, JD, J, J Dave, um, you would put your name in the derivatives as it sees, <clears throat> as it as it should be uh, here on this document. Um, secure party is hereafter known as John D. Doe straw caps. You're going to put your UPS box here or whatever address that you are using. It goes on to say, I, me, myself, addressee, John Dave Doe, here in after the agent of power of attorney to represent the secure party, the undersigned for one of we the people, sovereign, natural born, living soul, the posterity born upon the land in the one for several counties within the one for the several states united for America. The undersigned posterity creditors and claimants herein, after I, me, myself, after I, me, my, myself, agent, do hereby solemnly declare, declare and say and state that I, me, myself, my, myself, agent, am competent for stating the matter set forth here, herewith. I, me, my, myself, agent, have personal knowledge concerning the facts stated herein. All the facts stated herein are true, correct, complete, and certain, not misleading, admissible as evidence, and if stating I, me, my, myself, agent, shall also state, <clears throat> shall so state. Plain statements of fact, a matter, 
must be expressed for being resolved in commerce, truth, and sovereign. Truth is expressed in the form of an affidavit. An affidavit not rebutted stands as truth in commerce. An affidavit not rebutted after 30 days becomes the judgment in commerce. A truth affidavit under commercial law can be satisfied by truth affidavit rebuttal, by repayment, by agreement, by resolution, or by common law rules by a jury. I, me, myself, am expressing truth by this verified declaration in the nature for an affidavit of truth in commerce and contract by waiver for tort presented by me, addressee, John Dave Doe, living soul agent, one for we the people under original common law jurisdiction for the whatever state that you are in and the United States of America contracts the constitutions. Whereas the public record is the highest evidence for I, me, my, myself agent am hereby timely creating public record for declaration with this verified declaration in the nature for a truth affidavit in commerce in contract for a tort waiver presented by me, addressee, living soul name, um, living soul format, living soul agent, one for under we the people under original common law jurisdiction for the whatever state you're living in and United States of America contracts in the constitutions. I fact, I mean, one fact, the person secure party known as the straw man and all derivative there is, is a fiction without form of substance and any resemblance for any natural body living or dead is entirely international in commercial fraud by genocide acts for we the people for you're going to update it with your state by the alleged government officials and agents for the commercial corporation and commercial courts for the disenfranchising purpose we the living people for texas for from our life liberty property and pursuit of happiness among other rights for their self-enrichment using their, you want to put whatever state that you're in, rules of civil procedure, 52, outside the law authority, and our courts by original jurisdiction. Fact, I have placed copyright on the fiction, secure party known as John D. Doe, straw man, and all derivatives thereof. Secure party is my private property and cannot be used without my prior written consent. Three, fact is my, the fiction is my perfected security and registered by contract with me and with the secretary under state of whatever state it is as such for five years and is my recorded copyright fiction by this declaration under original common law jurisdiction for 100 years and is my private property, the agent for my estate protection, my life and my liberty. Okay. So it's going to go on and on um, into stating um, that the use of the fictitious, that the fictitious character is strictly forbidden. Um, also, the prices and penalties, what is chargeable, um, you know, how um, how you will move forward if this is vi if this violation is to take place, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. And it goes on to say that I, me, myself, am not an expert in the law. However, I do know right from wrong if there is any human being that is being unjustly damaged by any statements herein. If he slash she will inform me by fact, I will sincerely make every effort and amend my ways. I hereby and herein reserve the right for amending and making amendment for this document as necessary in order that the truth may be ascertained and proceeding justly determined, which means that you always have the right to go back and change your documents, you guys, and you always have the right to state that within a document, that you can fix it. You can always go back and fix it. If there is something that is not, if there is a typo, if there's something that you end up noticing, you have the right to always go back and update your documents. So don't ever think that anything is, um, once you do it, that it's done, you can always fix it, okay? 
And this bolded area reads, if any living soul has information that will convert and overcome this declaration, since this is a commercial matter, please advise me in writing by declaration affidavit form within 10 days from recording hereof, providing me with your counter declaration affidavit, proving with particularity by stating all resequent actual evidentiary facts and all resequent actual law and not merely the ultimate facts and law conclusions conclusions that this affidavit by declaration is substantially and materially false sufficiently for changing materially my or the fiction status of the fact and factual declaration. Your silence stands as consent and tacit approval for the factual declarations here being established as facts as a law and this affidavit by declaration will stand as the final judgment in this matter for the sum certain herein stated and will be in full force and effect against all parties due and payable enforceable by law. Okay, so you are going to uh, get this document notarized. Um, there are three witnesses that you can have. However, you can format this document as you want. If you if you want to have one witness, if you want to have two, you can go ahead and you can take that off. OK, um, you want to get this notarized. You want to file this with your county clerk. Once again, you want to make sure that you file it with your county clerk. You want to. Uh, you can also send this document to your governor to the same places that you sent your injunction. Um, for those of you who are uh, who were here for module one uh, with the injunction filing, you can send this document over to the same people, but filing it with the county clerk using your notice of county, your notice of county clerk will suffice. OK, but you also want to make sure that you file this with your UCC. And once again, you want to make sure that it conforms to your common law copyright of your declaration of sovereignty that we do in the beginning that you submit to the secretary of state. OK. So um, nonetheless, um, that completes, uh, that's the conclusion for this specific document. We'll be next moving on to our living trust, and that will be the finalization of module two, part one. Hello, everyone, and we are concluding our uh, estate claim module two, part one, uh, with uh, reviewing the living trust template that will be com completed as a part of your estate claim process, okay? Now, this document can be completed according to your discretion. Um, as it reads, the living trust agreement dated between the grantor or beneficiary of and blank trustee. So you can do this document between your straw man and your living soul, or you can do this document as it is according to your heirs. If you have someone that you have that you know will handle your assets and your affairs, you can put this document into play. But this is a living trust. Therefore, I highly recommend that you uh, establish it between yourself and your living, I mean, yourself, your living soul and your straw man, okay? Um, the purpose of this agreement is to establish a trust to receive and manage assets for the benefit of grantor during grantor's lifetime and to further manage and distribute the assets of trust upon the death of grantor, okay? So basically, with you being the grantor, if you can always go back and change this, okay? But while you were alive and you were able to handle your own affairs, you can have it in your name. And in fact, you can com you can complete this document with other, you can complete this document for both parties. If you want to go ahead and create your trustee now, and you can put it to the side and you can use that for when, so it can already be completed. If you already have someone in mind that you trust to handle your affairs, okay? Funding of the trust. This trust shall be funded with assets transferred to this trust by grantor at the time of creating this trust or at any later time 
during the lifetime of grantor, any interest in community property transferred into or out of this trust shall retain its original character and such property shall not be committed commingled. This trust may also receive property from any person or entity that is acting under the authority granted to that person or entity by the grantor. It is also expected that this trust may receive assets pursuant to the terms of the grantor's last will and testament. Three, management of trust. Trust shall manage and distribute trust assets for the benefit trustee shall manage, okay, um, and distribute trust assets for the benefit of grantor or grantor successor in interest in accordance with the term of this agreement. Um, I know that we don't pretty much deal with attorneys as it is as it pertains to our private affairs, our living soul. However, I highly encourage you to find you a trust attorney because it turns into more than just paperwork. You want to make sure that you are dealing with someone who has great experience in the field of trust. You want to begin to read books and do more research about trust so that you have greater understanding on how to handle your trust and what needs to take place so that everything can be on a uh, a clean slate. Everything can be on, uh, can be done right. Okay. So I highly, ex I highly encourage you to find a trust attorney who is good at this type of work so that you can have a better understanding as well as be covered. Okay. Okay. So, um, we are moving on payment during a disability of grantor. During a period the grantor has a disability, trustee may pay to or for the benefit of the grantor such amounts of income and principles as trustee believes in trustee's sole discretion to be required for uh, grantor support, comfort, and welfare, grantor's accustomed manner of living, or any purpose that trustee believes that believes to be in the best interest of the grantor. I'm sorry about that, you guys. All right. Um, disability defined for the purpose of this trust. Uh, disability shall mean a legal disability, which means if you go to jail, uh, I mean, you know, any kind of anything that enables you from uh, from handling your own affairs um, or uh, inability to provide prompt and intelligent consideration to financial matters by reason of illness or mental or physical disability. The termination of whether the grantor has the disability shall be made by the grantor's most recent attending phys physician. Trustee shall be entitled to rely on written notice of that determination. Okay, death of grantor upon the death of the grantor and after the payment of the grantor's just debts, just debts, funeral expenses, and expenses of last illness, the following distribution shall be made. Specific distribution. So it's going to read into who, what children you want this to go to. If you have any grand, I mean, even if you don't have any grandchildren, you can take things and you can put it aside for grandchildren that are to come. You can say, I want it to be for my firstborn, my oldest firstborn, et cetera, et cetera. If you have a spouse, you can um, you can have this go to your spouse and you can have it distributed to uh, whatever person that you see fit. Um, if the beneficiary does not survive you need to have someone else into place that um who it will go to next okay um it speaks about the tangible personal properties uh automobiles and jewelry however we do have a property list that we will that would that is very in-depth um that will be filed with your ucc1 financial statement and it will cover everything that is not listed here. So what I do, what I'll do is I highly advise you to uh, read on through this document to provide yourself with a better understanding. Um, it even goes into, if you look here on C, it says residuary assets, the residuary assets of this trust shall be distributed to of. So when you see two, that would be if your daughter's name is Janet Shanice of the Johnson family. Okay, that's what that means. Um, 
if such beneficiary does not survive, grantee or grantor or spouse, the res residuary assets shall be distributed to the following beneficiaries in the amount of, you would say, okay, if your granddaughter is supposed to get 10%, um, two, it would be if your granddaughter's name is Monique John, uh, Monique, Monique Lene of the Johnson family will get 20%. And it will go on and so forth. And you can break down who gets what. And you can uh, copy and paste if you have multiple people that you want this to go to this document right here is not um i'm gonna sit down here and i'm gonna do this real real fast this is a document that you will really need to think on you will really need to think about the people in your family that you know would do the right things you need to think about who you will put into place and position over your assets you need to think on all of these things okay who will really uphold your wishes who you can really trust all right that's the whole point of calling it a trustee all right. But either way it goes, you guys, um, just read on into this. It goes very in depth, but it's very it's summarized in depth. Um, but it gives you a uh, it gives you more. Uh, it gives you a broader view of what a trust is about in the instruments that you need to have in place when establishing your uh, when, when establishing your trust and claiming your estate. OK, either way it goes, you guys, I thank you so much. That will conclude. Uh, our module two, part one in claiming your estate. I hope I provided some clarity. I will see you guys on module two, part two, where we will be talking about establishing uh, the national passport. All right, see you there.